So, where you guys left off, uh, Arnax said the gold is uh, yours, well, you know, to the city, because he believes what you guys are going to do is good and righteous. So, uh, he said not to mess with the staff, though, and then his staff went to uh, moving on its own, and he started going after it. So, what are you guys going to do? Still not combat order or anything, but what are you guys going to do? Uh, do you want to share that map hack again? I mean, oh, I can grab yes. it, but either way. Nope, coming right up. I pulled it up on mine and I just forgot to send it over to you guys. There we go. Where's the staff? It is going north of where Arnax is, so that's the direction it was moving. So he turned and faced it and was going after it, and he actually broke down that pillar as he was going down. And then he continues on around the corner up over here, but you see him when he's going, he actually does, uh, you see his form change from a very big reptilian form down to a, well, normal sized dwarf, not a, you know, huge sized dwarf. So that way he can hopefully try to get through without breaking everything else down. And you see him go around to this corner over there. That's all grayed out for us. We can't see any of that stuff. Uh, so, drop drop a token or something on the map so we know where you're talking about, where the staff is, G. It doesn't even okay. need to be in the combat tracker necessarily. Like, if you're not, if, if whatever it is, if you're not ready to put it in the combat tracker, that's fine. Just put a regular token. It doesn't even matter what it is. Uh, just find, like, a box or something. Uh, or a stick, whatever you can find. And then drop it on the map so we can see, you know, so we have a representation of, of where it is. Okay. Music here too. Mother Brain Metroid final level escape music. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, so it goes up over around over here. So it was. It started up behind where Arnax was over there. And then it is going. Oh, hang on. You guys can't see that yet. Hang on. There. Yeah, that's still mostly grayed out. Okay. There we go. But that's where it went, and then it, that's where it was when Arnax was standing there talking to you guys. It was not too far behind him, and then it goes over this way and goes around the corner with Arnax chasing it now in dwarven form, regular sized dwarf. So. Um, I'm going to. Uh, spin around and uh, grab Sheena by the arms, make sure she's not armed, uh, and say, so So Jarlaxel was coming in as well, right? He was following you? She said, yeah, I'm surprised he's not here yet, actually. Well, I'm assuming he's following me because he knows that I left, so I'm yeah, guessing well, he won't be too far behind. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing he is here and that you were lying. She says, uh, uh, no, I'm not. I mean, she seems, like, spooked again because every... Well, you don't. Okay, she seems spooked. If you want to see what she uh, rolling inside, you're welcome to. But she says, "No, definitely not. Um, I'm I'm here to help." You know me, guys. Uh, all the rough, uh, all the confusion. Again, you're not able to get a real good read on her, but you do believe her from what she said. But again, it, you know, you're not sure what she's panicked by, so. So, really all right then. So, on. so Jeremy, I don't believe her, but uh, but if Rob does, then then as far as the uh, uh, actions I take, then uh, you know, release her arms and just say, well, I, I think he must have lied to you too, then, because it seems like that's probably him. Uh, and then I'll turn and, and uh, you know run off down the hallway towards uh, just to see what's happening. I guess. Don't really okay. want to get yeah. it in between the dragon and whatever it's chasing. So just in case. Assuming okay. everything's structurally sound, I'll follow. Yeah, which, which pillar was it that he broke, G? Draw a circle around the that pillar. That one that you're broke. standing next to. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll put a circle on it then. Okay, thank you. And was it load-bearing? Like, is there is the ceiling beginning to cave there or anything? Uh, I mean, it, it did break at the top, too, but it's still uh, somewhat connected at the top. It was definitely smashed through at the bottom. Still connected at the top, but it's starting to break a bit up there. But, it, I mean, it seems like, at least not right now, it's not going to fall down because there's multiple other pillars okay. holding up. 
the, the same bridge, you know, area. So. Okay. I'm trying to find a good extended version. That one's only two minutes. Uh, all right. How about the like the room? What what can we see now from having run through this Excuse space me. here? Let me reveal that for you. Keep it lighthearted. Right. Blaster Master music, eight bit. There you go. Main main theme. The the mother brain one's fine. I just needed to find one that is an extended one like this, so that it's not repeat. Well, so that it doesn't fade out every two minutes. And I could I could have looped looking. it if I was ready for it. But anyway, go ahead, G. Oh, I was just gonna say uh, when you guys were looking because um, obviously Eldor can see that one that I just revealed there. Another alcove it seems to be a pretty you know you're used to this. Uh, shape of this place apparently and uh when you look to the other side as well uh, another alcove over there too with two more pillars. piles of gold out there yeah th yeah there's well actually i'm sorry the pile of gold is actually um i'll drop a pointer on it but it was up here and there was a, a secret door you know well not so much of a secret but a vault door that goes down below and that's where the money is that's what Ardax said so, in that alcove over there where the pointer is. Okay. Uh, and it looks like it's around the corner, there. so, like, if anything was running towards the stairs, you'd see it. Okay. Yeah, do I see the staff moving? Yeah, you actually did see the staff and the dwarf go up over there, so actually you can see this over here, G. And. He's actually not there anymore. They went around the corner. But you, uh, when you went up over there, because you were closer to the southern part, weren't you, babe, when you went up over that way? Yeah. Okay, so you didn't see it, uh, G, when you got up there, but uh, uh, Gasha was fast enough to see it go up the stairs. So. Oh, no, I wanted to shoot it before it went up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the dwarven dragon following behind. So. Yeah. And that was back there. Yeah, so you see the staff go up the stairs, uh, Gasha. And, well, you see the dwarf going up the stairs. So you're assuming he's not far behind the staff? Uh, alright, then I guess I'm gonna dash after him. Yeah, okay. right here. Alright, guys. Yeah, okay, it was the middle one. So, I'm just gonna remember which one it was that you guys came to. So. This one, I think. Yeah, it'd be that one right there, the middle room over uh, on the. Or that end of the bridge over there. So. Okay, and oh, I'm bringing them up over there. And again, he's not blocking that much room because he's not in that form. So just just shrink him down. Just change the size and, and you oh, can yeah. swap the token out or shrink the dragon down. It doesn't matter. Actually, I'll just grab another um, indicator token and just take him off of here for now. Well, if but he's if he that... needs to be in the combat tracker, then just shrink him and change his size. Just okay. Hold down control and use the mouse wheel to shrink him down, and then change his size when you go into the combat tracker under his item or under his record in the combat tracker, go to the one that looks like a like a diamond, like a four slashes making a diamond shape. Uh, click that, and then where it shows size, change it to five. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Then you can switch him back if he changes form again. All right, well, if I can see the staff moving, then I'm going to shoot, like, towards the where I would assume the feet of the person would be. Okay. And if he's um, a dwarf, she can probably aim over his head, you think? If he's a dwarf, rather? Uh, yeah, I think you'd be able to get over his head. Um, again, at that angle, it might be more like, you know, upper part of the leg. So, you know, That's fine, just or, general. Or, you know, ass or whatever. Area. You know. Okay. It's, I'm using snaring strikes. So. Alright. Um, roll an attack for me, please. Just roll it, you know, in the thing. You don't need a target. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm not gonna so, hit. Let me let me double check though. Well, just it'd in be case, so. Well, hang on. So anything if you can't see your target, it's at disadvantage. Okay. That's basically the, the the default rule is anything if you can't see what you're trying to hit, you're just aiming at a general area, then it's at disadvantage. Oh, yeah, that's okay. really not gonna hit. <clears throat> Well, 15 is not that bad, but 12 is not yeah. so good. You'd have to be just wearing leather, basically. Nope. Damn it. So you send an arrow out, and it tinks, and you, you get the... I mean, it's very close to where the staff was moving, so it was close, but it just tinks off the ground and actually flies off the bridge and goes down to the area below where you guys just were. So, or where you guys were before, when you were coming through here. All right, and this continues moving this way. Are we gonna go? Are Accurate. we going into initiative order or anything? Yeah, actually. So go ahead and roll initiative, guys. Now that you're actually closer. Did Sheena follow nice. us up? Uh, yeah, she did. Hang on, I'll bring her up. Sorry. Okay. His ghost is still staying with her. Okay. Elder's turn. You got a higher initiative than Ghost. You got a. You probably when you reset the combat roll or the the uh, order, you didn't reset it. You just changed the round. You got to actually hit the reset or drag the arrow to the top. It'd be Eldor first. Okay. Technically, Ghost round... Ghost and I should roll off, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Because I just hit the down arrow because it already said round zero, but it was probably part way through another round. From That's before, exactly what it so. was. Yeah. Okay. And Eldor uh, Eldor already had a previous initiative, so it was just going off of that. So it is uh, your turn, Eldor, sir. All right. Do I have a uh, clear shot of the uh, guy? Yeah. If you just move up, because they're through that doorway. But if you just move past Rob and step in front of him, yeah. And again, that's a dwarf chasing him. So I mean, you can get. Well, you don't know how tall the thing is, but if it's a humanoid, you could definitely get hit it. So. All right. I'm gonna fire one shot at uh, the person there. Okay. So just uh, roll an attack for me, please. Yep. That one would have hit, so... Uh, that one, you send an arrow out and it hits, it does hit something and you hear a yelping sound. So please go ahead and roll damage for me, please. Uh, okay, so that, because you didn't have a, that's why I was saying just use a random token, not actually put an NPC in there, because now that boar presumably doesn't have the same stats as whatever it is that was uh, invisible and running. So if you if you yeah. have an actual thing, just put it on there and leave it unidentified. So make sure that it's, okay. uh, whatever the unidentified thing is, just say invisible or something like that, um, okay. and make sure that it's red and not green. As long as it's red, then it'll show the unidentified line, not the regular, not the top line. So you can just put it in the combat tracker and change the token to to a random thing or something before you make it visible to us. Pull that more off there. It is. Okay. Yeah, I think it's this one. Alright, 
Um, so I don't. I, I'll just uh, reveal it because it doesn't matter. Because when you shot it, you guys probably got an idea of what it was. So it is still invisible, but just to make it easier. So can you see, yeah, right there. That guy, and it was. I'll hide the damage to him. Okay. So he's not actually dead, but he did take a good arrow uh, in his back, Sako. So. Sounds good. I uh, shot him with the pistol. Oh, you shot him with the pistol. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's still up though. But yeah, so he took a, a pistol shot to the back. Excuse me, not an arrow, but he is still um, moving though. So. And now our yeah. ears are all ringing because he shot a pistol in this tiny room. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. There's not gonna be much noise muffling on that. A little grinning ear so. to ear because I got this fire shoot a firearm, <laughs> so we're good. He's happy. Happy He's cat. Time for ice cream. Uh, any bonus to Sako? Uh, not at this time. Okay. All right, G. All right, I can make it to just just through the doorway. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the door a bit, but like off to, you know, as, as far off of the side as possible, basically, so that I'm not blocking completely. Uh, and then I'm going to throw my spear at uh, at the bandit and try to trip him. Uh, it, now, okay. the, I get Well, I guess, never mind, we can't see him yet anyway, so so I'm just going to throw it uh, at where the leg area would be. Um, you know, for, for if I see the staff floating in there, basically, where a humanoid's legs would be, essentially, so... Uh, okay. It'd be at disadvantage, and I don't have my determination. Uh, he has not acted yet, though, so I will have actually advantage from that, from Quick Strikes. That'll work. Okay. So it'll be a flat roll. Oh, I got the wrong one. Hang on. Damn it. There we go. 21. That connects. Alright, and then I'm going to trip him. Uh, he needs to make a... Uh, here, I'll just drop it on him. Okay. So, strength save. Failed. Alright. Then he is prone, and I'll do my damage here. Uh, he's actually, he's hurt already too, isn't he? Yes, Sako shot him. trip in there already. I did. <laughs> now, is he actually unconscious? Yeah, that one actually put him down. So, so uh, you were throwing your spear, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you go and you throw the spear and it hits him right in the lower back because Sako kind of got him up in the lat a little bit more with that pistol shot. And he was still trying to run. It definitely hurt him a lot, but he was still trying to run and you hit him like right in the lower back and it just hits his uh, spine right there and he just goes crumbling to the ground. Okay. The spear sticking out of his back. Then and that is, that's it for my turn. I'm not, I don't need my bonus action. Okay. And when you go to throw the spear at him, you hit him in the back again, he falls forward, and he lets go of the staff, and it goes flying, and it falls off the bridge into the level below. So, it is, so that same chamber that you guys came in, the, the first that you walked in, is uh, where the staff is at now. Okay. Uh, off of that third bridge, drop a Drop a token or so. Well, I guess if it doesn't matter, then it's fine. But otherwise, you can put something on the map on the big room to show where it dropped. Okay. Yeah, I guess he was on that northern one, so it would have been right about over there. So on the south, so on the map on the lower left area is where that uh, first room is and I drew a circle there so above well, the, that top well, well below the three bridges it would be over the middle one if it if it fell just over the oh no they were right on down, the middle yes yeah it would be the middle one so it would be down like 30 feet or so from there it doesn't really it doesn't exactly matter but uh, yeah it's fine so I'll get rid of that one yep but that's it for my turn okay I'll just I'll, I'll you know tell RNX now's your chance go get it We'll, we'll take care of the, the this guy. 
All right, so he goes. I'll shout back to Eldor and Akasha. Does anybody have any flour? <laughs> flour? Yeah. yeah, I'm not looking to bake a cake. If we cover this guy in flour, we'll be able to see him. <laughs> Actually, if he. Hang on, G. If he. Uh, the he invisibility that was on him. He? Well, it depends. If it was a concentration effect that he was holding, then yes. Or she. Uh, but if it's something that was cast on him by someone else, then the concentration would still stay up. Okay, then it, it was not self cast. And so um, you see bloody parts, you know, what would. So like a, a circle, you know, bullet hole, bloody with blood dripping down it, and, you know, where the, the spear hit and. Uh, he fell over. So you do see like a couple of blood spots, but it's still invisible. And you're, unless you pulled it out, your spear is still in his back. Well, I mean, it hasn't come back around to me yet, so unless we're out of combat, um, you know, but then uh, it would be Actually, Ghost's turn. Yeah, so because what, what happens is you, what? you, uh, Ardax sees it go over, and I mean, he, as soon as he sees it go over, he waits for a second, and then you see him, uh, you know, right as you say that, and he actually hops down uh, in Dwarven form, and he actually, right before he hops down, he switches back over to his uh, dragon form, and so that way he can, you know, not totally crash and kill himself. Lights down for a second, and he is on the floor below. And then you, looking over, G, you see a, another similar-looking, you know, guy but dressed similarly, uh, same kind of stuff, leather armor and everything, to the one that you just killed. Uh, this one's, you know, okay. Actually, well, you can't see that. Never mind. I guess I just thought that it really matters, but <laughs> revealed what he was wearing. But uh, uh, you see a, another, you know man down there in leather armor pick it up and start running down towards the vault entrance and Arnax is chasing him. Okay. So they are heading for the vault door is what you would assume. Um, I, I, I think I want to tie this guy up first before we bother going after that one. Um, you know, I mean, it's kind of our Arnax's problem anyways. We kind of did what we were supposed to do. But either way, I'll tie this guy up at least. Um, no way to get a... Okay, the guy that was below, then, what did he look like? Like, yeah, he was, and how he's equipped, and any, you know, identifying marks, tattoos, etc. Uh, humanoid or elven or something like that. Um, not, not a dro, not, not a dark skin, so like, you know, regular cracker skin. And, maybe, you know, regular sized human male, or elven male, something like that. You know, just, you couldn't get a real close look, but, uh, leather armor, had a sword on the side. Kind of your like, standard run of the mill looking thug kind okay. of guy. And she, Sheena's so. up in the room with Eldor and Akasha, right? Because she uh, couldn't yes, have gotten out of the other room. Okay. No, yeah, I just forgot to keep moving her. She, she was in there too. So. And then I'll, I'll shout at Sheena, so you recognize these guys? I guess she didn't see the other one, and this guy's not visible yet, so never mind, so she couldn't. Uh, and she but, says, oh, and she says, uh, did you say that out loud, or did you not? Well, mean to no, say just just because I would realize, of course, that, that it's invisible, and she wouldn't have been able to see the other one, so so that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. But just I'll, I'll just yell at her that I find it very suspicious that uh, if this vault that no one's ever seen or heard of in in you know thousands of years, however long it's been, uh, all of a sudden you sneak in without knowing where the entrance is, and then these guys find a way in right behind without this being connected. It doesn't make any sense. She says. Uh... Uh, I I really have no idea what's going on. As far as I know, the boss isn't doing anything dirty, but uh, if he is, I don't know about it. And I, I'm not sure who the hell even found this place behind us because, you know, I, obviously, Joe Axel had a pretty good idea of where it was under the windmill and everything, so uh, he told me. And I came looking through the windmill and found my way in here, but I don't think anybody else knows. Well, at the very not least, you I'm were followed. Of. She said apparently I was. Sorry about that, guys. I was just coming to try to help because I just didn't know what was going to be down here. And this was going to be a pretty, uh, pretty tough job to finish. So, well, I'm gonna while while talking with her, I'll have tied this guy up. Uh, what do you guys want to do, Eldor and Akasha? Super suspicious. Um, definitely keep an eye on things. Ironax is already down, like down below, right? He's not with us. Uh, no, he is below. And yeah, he's still running for the vault entrance, and then, actually... While you guys are sitting there figuring out what to do, you see... Where's he at?
I think I've had enough no, of the... No, they're actual familiar face. Enough of their good. Uh, alright, well, where, I guess, where, where is he? Okay, he's just at the side of the bridge there. Yeah. You, you hear a voice say, what the hell was that? This huge fucking dragon just went by me. What the hell's going on? Well, he was in dragon form, or he was in dwarf form. He wasn't in dragon form. When he hopped down, he switched because he didn't want to, you know, fall and hurt himself. So he switched into dragon oh, form right see. before he hopped okay. down, so he could fly down and not and not smash himself. That makes sense. So. Okay. Did he? Did he? Are they out then? Like he went through the front door in his dragon form. He didn't switch back to dra to dwarf. No. Yeah. He he continued out. So because the door was pretty big, so he could be able to fit through it. It's just getting through the chambers and stuff. But that that big that room down there is big enough for him to fit through, and so is the vault door. So. Uh, well, but yeah, you wouldn't. You, well, you would know that. I mean, looking at the size and everything. But Jarlaxle did say the, the big ass dragon just went by me, chasing a, a, a guy carrying a staff, and he's like, "Did that?" And then Jarlaxle says, "Did that staff come from uh, the, the, the the dragon? Obviously, wants that staff, so I'm guessing that came from the chamber where he was." And then he tells you guys that you actually might want to collect that staff, uh, help help uh, Ardax if you need to get that staff because. Uh, if it falls into the wrong hands, it can definitely mess some shit up. So, then maybe you should have mentioned that ahead of time. If you knew something that was in there was vital, then I mean, it's a little late now. If they're running for the door, I mean, you'd probably be just as capable of getting it as us. I want to know why the, why these people just somehow, including your your assistant here, just uh, snuck in behind us minutes after we opened this place up, after it's been sealed for hundreds of years somehow. Unrelated, Sheena, as well as whoever these uh, uh, thieves are, managed to find this place. This is unheard of, and we managed to find it, of course, after significant effort. We sneak in, and and at, within an hour of us being here, two separate other entities, two separate other groups sneak in right behind us. He says, uh, well, eh, I gotta admit, I did send Sheena after you guys. That's why she wasn't too far behind you. But uh, whoever those other people are running with that staff. I, I really don't know who they are, and that's the honest truth. I think we've more than earned our keep. If you want that staff, you're going to have to go get it yourselves. He says, uh, okay, um, no problem, but uh, I, don't, I don't think Arnax is going to stop until he gets it, and so he might end up uh, smashing the city up a bit, so I mean, not that you really <laughs> care, but... If look, if if a dragon can't get it, I don't know that uh, a cowman, an elf, and a and an old soldier are going to be able to help him too much. He says, "All right, well, I at least got to go see if I can help." And he starts going this way. Uh, before you leave, you you had nothing to do with these guys, right? So you wouldn't mind if I just you know kind of push this guy over the edge here. I mean, he's bleeding out; he's not dead yet, but I'm sure the hit to the ground will will take care of that. He looks over and says, Guy, oh yeah, that's what those random blood spots are. Uh, okay. Invisibility, yeah, that's a nice little trick. No, I don't fucking care. Kick him over. I'll watch him splat. Be kind of entertaining. Check his pockets, though, first. He might have some money. All right. Always with the Scrooge McDuck gold. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Then I'm, I'm going to leave him tied up because I, I want answer. I want to know, at least, if these guys snuck in, I want to know how they found out about it, so... I'm going to question him first, so I'm going to go ahead and give him a little bit of stridos to keep him from bleeding out. Okay. So. All right. And I'll just, you know, turn my back and Jarlaxo can, can leave. What do you guys think? Do you, do you disagree? Should we go after it? Ralph will get the, uh, the water boarding ready. Yeah, pretty much. What do you think? Should we go after the staff or, or let them deal with it? Might be useful to us. I think maybe if it becomes a problem. Plus, if the dragon wants it, we would be on the uh, dragon's good side as well if we grab it. I just don't like constantly playing gopher for this, like over and over and over again, especially when this is so suspicious. This is the second time that uh, people that presumably could have come from Jarlaxle. He says they're they're not, and and you know we believed him uh, as far as our. Uh, you know, intuition is gone, but it, it just seems awfully suspicious that every time he's involved, people show up randomly when they shouldn't and are invisible and try to steal something. It happened with the stone, and now it's happened with this staff. 
And he didn't mention this staff, but somehow he knew about this staff. He didn't mention it when we asked him specifically what was in the vault that was important and all it was was just gold, right? But he apparently knew about this staff also. Those, those things don't add up. Omitting some information. Yeah. So, uh, in that case then, if we believe Sheena enough and that they're telling the truth, it still seems extremely suspicious to me, to me but uh, you know, we can ask Sheena to keep an eye on this guy, keep him from uh, uh, escaping, and in fact, maybe even escort him back to Ghost Bar, if she can get him there safely, so that she's not here, uh, you know, when the dragon comes back in case he's angry. Um, you know, Gerald Axel can work out whatever arrangements he can to uh, start getting the gold out of the place and so on. Although he didn't actually talk to the dragons, so I don't know that he has that authority just yet. But anyway, uh, you know, if she can get him back to the bar, then we can question him later and we can go after uh, Arnax to see if we can help. Sounds yeah. good. Okay, then in that case, uh, they already went through the front, like, because the dragon couldn't fit probably up the ladder. So, I mean, he would have had to turn back into dwarf shape. I don't know how many times he can do that. But, he, you know, to, for him to get out, he would have presumably had to turn into, uh, you know, a more humanoid form to be able to get out of the place. So we won't necessarily be chasing a dragon. We'll have to find, you know, whatever tracks we can find to, to follow them. He's a dragon. He can scale up anything. Well, yeah, but, I mean, it's a ladder. He can't... The, the, the hole in the ceiling, unless he breaks through it, was like a humanoid style, size hatch. It wasn't, you know, a 30 foot wide high hatch, remember? The, the door, the trap door that we pulled open. So the ladder that leads up to that is not going to be able to support his size. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, it was just a play on words. Oh, scale, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> All right, well, then, you know, I'll ask Sheena then if, she, if she'll keep an eye on him and, and escort it back to the bar, leave him tied up. She says, uh, yeah, no problem. I'll take him back there. So. All right, then let's take off, see if we can follow after him. Okay, so take him out of there. Let me see if I can find some chase music or something. And on your guys' way out, I'm assuming you guys are uh, leaving. Did you want to do anything else before you left? Before you start heading no, out? Not for me. Okay. Yeah, I think we got we got kind of a time issue for that, so no time for a long rest or anything. All right, and when you guys are going down, you guys can move yourselves down there if you want to. I already moved Rob down there, because again, that's just to, to remind you guys where the chamber was, where you guys started at down there. And when you guys are going through there, uh, you look and see G uh, as you're walking through, because you're the first one to go through, that um, your friend, Charl Axel, didn't make it very far. And he is standing right here, and he is in front of a whole bunch of new friends mm -hmm. and you also see that there are uh, on the side where Jarl Axel is um, there are some well, actually quite a few bodies probably like four or five other bugbear bodies that uh, are kind of burned really well so you're assuming they were trying to stand in the way as Aranax went through and he fried them but you do see, so yeah, seven bugbears, a, a dwarven guy in uh, armor, and another one of your most you know favorite enemies that you fought a million times. Another gazer there, all standing in your guys' way, and Jarl Axel yelling at him, telling him to get the hell out of the way because he needs to go, go after the dragon. So go ahead and roll initiative for me, unless you guys are going to try to talk your way out.
I'll nice. Need to, I'll need to drag the arrow, Genji. Okay. Natural one, <coughs> both elbow and ghost. <clears throat> Hang on, let me roll their initiatives. You can, if you're just rolling initiatives, you can right click uh, the arrow at the bottom, I think it is, or it's somewhere there in the combat tracker. It might be the menu button, and then there's an initiative thing, and there's just like roll all hostile initiatives or whatever. So you can do oh, cool. them all at once. Okay. All right. And then the one on the very top was the best, is the highest initiative. So it actually is supposed to be the gazer, right, G? Because I just brought the arrow to the top. Yeah, so whatever. Right. Yeah, as long as he's above a 19. Yeah, he got a 22. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. And uh, when Jarlaxle was yelling, you hear him another. The, he was yelling and talking to the. Uh, well, you can see him, kind of from there, maybe. But you hear a uh, another a humanoid voice that Jarlax was talking to. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see him from where you're at. Uh, not directly in front of him. It would be over to the uh, left of, on the map. That's where it sounded like it was coming from. So. And... Again, you see another one of those gazers that you've seen a million times. And it looks over at Jarlaxle right there. Let's see what's going to do. Yeah. So he looks over at Jarlaxle and he gets his concentrated beam out of his main center eye thing and like this bluish, like ice blue kind of color and shoots it at Jarlaxle. And eh, not with that. And so he shoots this beam out of his eye and Jarlaxle just nimbly just jumps right out of the way. It doesn't even get really close to him and just hits the ground over behind him. Okay. And then you hear a uh, that other humanoid type voice again yell something, and then you hear feet moving. What is it? Okay. All right. You can just take him off the tracker, yeah. Just so that okay. it clears it out. And if our Anax isn't in here, you can take both of them out. Yeah. Alright, G. It is your turn. Okay. Uh, having heard that there's more around the corner there, more, uh, you know, aggressive uh, people, I'm gonna uh, yell just, uh, everybody get down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna thin the, the or uh, even the odds a little bit. And I'm gonna run forward, and I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna light one of my bombs and throw it into this group over here. Okay. Nice. Throw it about there, just uh, uh, trying not to hit Jarlaxle with it. Uh, so they need to make uh, Dex. Actually, I gotta roll that real quick. Hang on. Okay. Then they need to make uh, uh, deck saves. It's only a 14. They have to beat her. They take half damage. So here, let me target him real quick. Okay. And there is... 
Uh, well, it looks like about half and half. Uh, 18 failed, uh, Gazer succeeded, 19 failed, and 14 succeeded. So. Okay, this should... It should automatically apply half damage to the ones that saved, the ones that succeeded. So I'm going to roll the damage. Just look at their uh, look at their HPs and make sure that the ones that saved only take half. Okay. <sighs> yep. So like it, it must have because like on the gazer, it, I mean it knocked him out. Well, it didn't just knock him out; it blew him fucking smithereens. Apparently, instead <laughs> of that. But it did say half in parentheses. So that means he only took half damage, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, okay, would show, it would show the number also. Like, if you look at the damage that they've taken, their wounds would be different. Otherwise, they'd all four stay the same. Unless someone had okay. fire resistance or something. Yeah, so you go drop that bomb out. And even though, you know, uh, apparently one of the ones that even only took half damage still got smoked. So it blows the gazer to bits and pretty much blows up the bugbears too. And uh, the one on the end, 14, is still alive. But I'm guessing he's probably not looking good. Let me see. Yeah, he's he's bloodied for sure. I mean, he's still going to be, you know, could potentially be dangerous, but he took a nice big blast. He's missing a lot of fur. He's got some good, like, actual burns, not just singe marks on that side of his wash. I'd be kind of on the front. Cause... No, because it was centered right on them, huh? So he would have gotten hit on his left side. So, yeah, his left side's pretty torched. But... Okay. He is still alive, though. Then I'm going to, uh, just having heard that there's more coming around this corner, I used, I think I was... A little bit. In, I used probably 20 feet to get there, so probably only to here, uh, as far as I can get. Anyways, come around this corner, and that's over my turn. Uh, actually, I'm okay. using my bonus action to switch my poison. Uh, just clean it off with one and, and put a different one on. That's it. Okay, and that one is toast. So it's not his turn. Akasha, it's your turn. Alrighty, so. 30. Can I see this bugbear or the dwarf? Do I have a clean shot? Yeah, actually you would. As, as long as you're within the actual range, you'd have a clean shot on all of them. None of them are even behind any kind of cover. So. We're going to hit the dwarf. Okay. It hits. All right, now I still have ensnaring strike up, so that can see if he makes a save. Did he make a save? Oh, he failed. Sorry. Yep, he did not see. Did not succeed. So he's restrained. Then. All right, so you go to shoot him, and you see like these. Uh, well, like fine, he's not really going to grow out of there, but his feet seem like they're kind of stuck together. He doesn't seem like he's going to be able to move. Almost like he tied his shoelaces together. Damage. Uh, okay, and then I need to do. So I dropped the damage thing on him, right? Yeah. Pretty sure. So, at the top of his turn, he takes more damage. Okay. And I'm done. Alright. And after you shoot him and his feet seem to bind down there, you hear him uh, yell, get him. And then you see one of the bugger attacks to him start moving this way. And let's see what he can do. All right, you actually see him running with a javelin in his hand, and he goes to throw it at you, babe, since you just shot at his uh, commander. Well, you'd assume it is the person that he's listening to. <sighs> and he hits you with it, so he goes and tosses a javelin at you and hits you right in the leg with it.
Eh, not too bad, though. And you're... <laughs> okay. <laughs> he goes and whacks you on the leg with that javelin, and it's sticking out of your thigh like on Ace Ventura, and you're sitting there yelling, and then uh, you notice that uh, the dwarf's feet don't seem to be stuck anymore. All right. And it is his turn. So, seeing that he can actually move now. Yeah. I believe I rolled a one. If only we had a halfling with us. <laughs> Comes over this way and pulls out a crossbow to try and shoot at Rav. Because he was running through, he was looking at you, going the same, uh, Akasha going the same way that the bugbear was, but when he looked around the corner, he saw Rob standing over there, so decided to try to get him instead, since the bugbear was already throwing javelins at you. He shoots you. Damage absorbed. What did you have that would do that to you? Uh, we had 10 temporary hit points from the, yes. uh, from ringing the gong, the, yeah. the hammer thing. Yep, so he went to shoot you with uh, an arrow, and it does hit you. But again, you had that little bit of extra blessing from that anvil. And that is it for him. Jarlax was saying that uh, there's only one dude left over here. Alright, he actually, standing from where he is, pulls out uh, two daggers from his side. Throws one in his left hand at the bugbear and whacks him. And then he pulls out, or then he throws the one from his right hand. But that one does not connect. So, he's going to actually just stay where he is. Okay. Um. Oh, Sheena, yeah. And she's actually. No, Sheena left to go. Well, she would be kind of well, behind she, you guys, though, too. No, remember, so, well, she wouldn't have been able to get out any other way, so yeah. she would have had to come out this way. Yeah, so she's actually down there, too, and she was carrying, you know, picking that dude up and, well, walking him, because you, you did heal him to where he's... Yeah, know, I brought him back to consciousness. Conscious enough, just, uh, so. Yeah. And so she she was walking with him, but she obviously gets stopped, so she is with you guys down there. Let's go her down with Okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's a good one. So, she uh, sees the act. Well, she would have seen the action anyway, and so she sees the dwarf that just shot at you. She, she comes over this way. It's 15. Yeah, okay. Well, remember, they, she would have been coming from the stairs. Like, we didn't jump down. We all would have been coming from this doorway over here. Yeah, okay. So actually she would have... Like, we all would have been coming from that door. Like the, Well, one of those two, those two northwest doors. Because that's the only way out, remember? Yeah. So we didn't jump down from the ladder. We all would have been on that side, not on the other side. It doesn't doesn't yeah, exactly so... matter, but just there. Yeah, so, so she would have been more like over there. So And then she pulls out a gun that looks a lot like the one that Eldor has. Sheena's got a gun. <laughs> Ooh. And she pulls out her gun to shoot that bugbear and hits him right in the neck. I'm guessing mm. not this at all. Not even close. And she pulls out her gun, shoots it right in the neck, and it actually goes right through his carotid artery. And he's just shooting blood everywhere. And he falls to the ground. 
and he's uh, totally fucking toast. So. Stupid bugbear. <sighs> that big dude is done. 25. Okay. Seeing his friend get shot there. Bam. Bam. So he also similarly has a javelin, just like the other one that just got himself uh, killed. And he's going to see if he can hit Sheena for killing his, well, friend or whatever. And he's not even close. Goes and throws a javelin at her, and she's a bit short, and he's a bit tall, kind of just goes over her head. Lands on the ground behind her. This one's turned. Okay, so he's going to... The one over here that Jarlax was just throwing daggers at comes over running at him. Has a morning star in his hand, swinging it around, and goes to try to whack Jarlax on the head with it. Hmm. I missed this. That's interesting. Seriously? No, he didn't miss. Oh, yeah, no wonder. <laughs> Jarlax is huh? he's really high. Yeah. Uh, he just missed with a, uh, let me see. Yeah, he just missed with a 23, so. Damn. So he goes to swing it, and Jarlaxle again, just like Matrix style, just flips out of the way. And, uh, the morning star goes wide and misses. Eldor, it's your turn, sir. Alright, I'm gonna look to my right and take a look at Akasha and, uh, Rav, just to see how they're doing health-wise, as I move south. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. I still have six temporary HPs. Yeah, and nine damage, so you're, yeah. you know, you've only got three. I guess you can say damage. And same for Rav, four temp and seven damage. So they're both just a little bit scratched. All right. Uh, as I'm running, I'm going to pull out my crossbow and uh, stop just short of uh, Jerlaxle and shoot Bugbear 14. Okay. And you shed that cross while wow, it hits him for a good hit, hits him right in the chest. This one that's already burned up from that bomb too. Yep, nice good shot right into his yeah. chest and it's enough to knock him down. He goes and grabs his chest and then just falls over, doesn't even say anything. Or, well, you know, make any bugbear words, I guess, whatever the hell they speak. And falls over dead. He's toast. Alright, I'm just going to use the remaining five feet of movement right here. Okay. Alright, Ghosty. Alrighty. Oh, perfect. So, he's just going to run over this way and pounce on this dude. Okay. And... Yeah, so he goes to jump on the dwarf, and uh, even though he's kind of tall and the dwarf's kind of short, he still gets him on the shoulders and knocks him over on his ass. He failed to save. He's prone. And then he takes bite. It hits. Oh, wait. No, not this guy. That's a dwarf. Never mind. There we go. Yep, gets a nice good bite on him, too. Bites into the top of his shoulder right there. Pulls out a little piece of meat and he's chewing on it. All right, Anything else? And then he should have 10 feet of movement. He's just going to move, like, oh, not quite that far away. Like there. Okay, spin around. Yeah, wherever he is, five feet, right there. Cool. All right. Gaze on <sighs> toast. Him. Okay. So. He comes up over around here, seeing all the action this way. Standing behind his dead friend over there. And he sees the giant cat. And he's going to see if he can throw a javelin at poor ghosty over there, who just bit his friend and knocked him over. And he hits hello. And he goes and throws a javelin and does hit Ghosty. Sticks into the the front of his little flank area there, and um, 
he actually has that 10 HP though, and it doesn't even look like it knocked all the way through it though. So that little bit extra blessing helped for sure. And... Me? It's you, G. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, the dwarf is still prone, right? And the two, let's see, 25 and three are still standing. I'm gonna go. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just run by and and uh, give the dwarf a, a good jab on uh, as I'm running by to try to intercept uh, seven and twenty-three. Uh, he's prone, so it'll be at advantage. But uh, yep. Yeah. Twenty-five. It is. All right, and he's already wounded. Yeah, yeah. Ghost got him, and then somebody else hit him too. I think you did. I think or something. Or no, you shot him. Babe. Yeah, I did. Or Kasha did. Yeah. So he's been yeah hurt for sure. Okay. And that was really good. When you were running by, jabbed him. There was enough to. He doesn't seem to be moving us. Well, he definitely seemed to hurt as you were running by. You might not notice because you were still running, but he's unconscious though. Okay. And then nice I'll. Yeah. Then I'll just step, uh, you know, one more forward and, and uh, whack uh, 20, 25 here with my. Uh, uh, with the butt end of the spear. Okay. 17. Hits. Uh, is he wounded yet? Is 25 wounded yet? Oh, never mind. I can I only think... get it once per turn anyways. Okay, I was going to say, I think they all are. But... Uh, and yes, he is wounded. I can only do it once per turn anyways, and I used it on... I should have saved it, but I used it on the dwarf instead. Noscar Urgre. When we mouse over him, we can see the what the name is. Yeah. Alright. Alright, babe. We're gonna hit this guy. Maybe. Yeah. yeah it does. It hits, yes. Alright, and I need that. Did I do that right? Every expired? Yeah, okay. Um, and I'm going to step back just a little bit and hopefully be out of his range. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. buggers are goblinoids, huh? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I forgot about so. that. Uh, I have goblinoids as well, so it actually would be two extra damage on Bugbear 25. Okay. Uh, AFK, one second, and then I'll crack that. Be right back, guys. Okay. Hi. I'm curious what the explanation is that these guys all happen to stumble upon the entrance of this place if they're not connected with Jarlaxle in some way. And the fact that Sheena has a gun exactly like the one that Eldor picked off that drow. Yeah, the the three that we killed on the rooftops. Uh, no, we let them go, but the the ones that we got on the rooftops and took their guns away. Yeah, like she has a gun of the of the exact same sort. Uh, they were drow just like Jarlaxle. Uh, these guys don't look like they're with Jarlaxle at all, but it just seems. Well, I guess that he was, you know, that they were attacking him and him and them. Unless it was a you know an intentional false flag. He's probably not lying about these guys, but it's still suspicious. Last week after she came in behind us and then, you know, the staff started moving, I just assumed, like, as soon as at the end of the session, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's obviously Jarlaxle. And he came in right behind her, invisible, with the intent of trying to use us as a distraction to steal the staff. That's what I assumed was happening. But since the, you know, he came upstairs while that, you know, person who had the staff was still running away. So, you know, he's probably not them unless he can be in two places at once. Or he hired them to take it. Yeah, it could be. I mean, these guys could just be hirelings that, uh, you know, he doesn't care about killing to, to kind of throw the uh, scent of suspicion off of him, but... Mm -hmm. Just an extra two damage. There we go. So that is corrected. And... Yeah, seven's one of the unconscious ones. And 
he's yours or he's on Dodgers too. Jarl Axel comes around this way. And actually, yeah, from right there. Well, no, because he wouldn't have much of a shot. He comes over and uh, he doesn't just, he doesn't really do anything. He just comes over there and starts to yell, who the hell are you working for? And then sees that the dwarf's unconscious on the ground. He's like, ah, shit. So you see him looking at the dwarf, kind of like investigating him to see if he can look and see if he has any distinguishing marks or anything on him. And Sheena's turn. I'll I'll shout at Sheena as a reaction to uh, to to grab this dwarf and get him away, and we'll question him. She's already leading the one bandit anyway. She can throw him down. You know he won't be able to run too fast when he's chained up anyways. Uh, and you know if she rushes over here, she can get him, kind of pull him away from the group. And we can bring him back to consciousness and question him later. Or Jarlaxle can. Good. We don't really need to deal with it. She says, "Good idea." She comes through this way, and she's just gonna, um, since you guys are kind of surrounding him, she's just waiting there until people get a chance to move out, but then she is going to go try to get the door out of there too, and bleed him out. Alright, it's 25's turn. He also, similarly, has a morning star and pulls it out, swinging it around. Tries to hit Rav. I'm gonna repost if he misses. He did miss. All right. And that connects. And he's wounded. Um. Yeah. I hit him. Yes. So. Yes. Yep. See if that takes care of him. Damn it! I rolled really shitty. <laughs> that was worth a shot. That's it, though, for the yeah. repost. Yeah, definitely a, a decent hit, and he is bloodied, but he's still up on his feet, though. But he's definitely taking a hurt. So. Okay. That was tough. Eldor, it's your turn. All right, I'm going to move closer to the battle here. And as long as I have a clear shot of uh, number 25, I'm going to fire the crossbow at 25. Would that be impeded, G? Since there's that diagonal angle in between you and Ghost? He's kind of got the space between between Ghost and I without... I mean, unless he rolled, like, say, under and the a five, the floor, so. then he'd probably be okay. 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 So you got a mostly clear shot, Sucker. Now you jinxed it. I'm going to roll a one, shoot myself <laughs> in the foot. Yeah. Well, if you roll a one, it's probably going to hit me, so... Probably. Or maybe Ghost yeah. is get hit Ghost right in the side of the face or something. Now to hit the dwarf and kill him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah exactly. that, would, that would suck, too. <laughs> Nope, it was good enough, and uh, it did go over, but it did not hit the bugbear, though. I mean, it got through Rob and, and Ghost, but it did not connect with the bugbear. It hit the ground right next to his leg, actually, so it missed. Gotcha. I'll use my remaining movement to scoot up here. Okay. No bonus action? Uh, not at this time, no. All right, guys. Ghosties. All right. Oh, perfect. Ten feet. That's all Pounce needs. Um, oh no, it's twenty feet. Alright, so he's going to back up ten feet and then pounce on this guy. Okay. We'll just set him down here so he's not on the dwarf. Does not succeed, so he also gets knocked over too. Bigger target, easier to get, but he didn't have any trouble with the dwarf either, so. Knocks him down. Um, he's fighting. And it hits. Nice. Oh, I forgot. He gets my favorite enemy. There should be two extra. Oh, damn it. Damage okay. on that. So an extra two on, yep. on from mine, two from this last round. Or from the okay. repost, rather. Uh, and that was all on 25, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, actually, um, with the extra damage added in from yours, and then the corrected damage from Ghosty, that fight actually does take him down. It exceeded his hit points by one. So, 
So Ghosty goes and takes a bite right out of the guy's face, actually. And kind of hear some nice crunching sounds as he digs into his eye and everything. Mm. And that is it. He does not move. Ghost face is covered right in Toast. That one's toast. Wait a minute. Nope. This is the one that is still alive. He sees that things are not going his way, and he's gonna hightail the hell out of here, which is, yeah. And since he's running, he's actually just gonna not attack, use a dash. He actually makes it right to the door. He's getting out of here, man. But not through the door, right? Just to the door? He's right in front of it, and he ran out of movement speed. Um, I'm gonna hop over McDudson. Uh, let's see, five, ten. I can make it to the ear, and I'm gonna just throw my spirit uh, at the one that's running. I'll try to trip him as well, I think. Okay. Lethal or non-lethal? Uh, lethal. I don't care about the bugbears. As long as we keep the dwarf yeah. alive and we already have the other bandit, so... And that... 26? Hits, yes. Alright, and he is wounded too? Yeah. Uh, succeed or fail? Uh, he succeeds. Alright, then he's not knocked prone. Uh, still does the damage, but it isn't knocking prone. Yeah. Oh, I forgot my poison on that anyways, but it looks like it doesn't matter. Nope. So you go, and uh, just like that other one, except for this one actually hits him in the back of the head, so you get a nice little, nice little uh, javelin in the back of the head, and he falls forward, and then he kind of, he hits the, the right where the vault door is open right there, so if the door was closed, he would have hit the door and it's just right in the entrance of it right there, the spear in the back of his head. Then I'll go pull my spear out of his head and I'll go, of course, collect the gazer corpse and put it in my bag. That's now number okay. three. I'm gonna cast uh, Spare the Dying on uh, Nasca or Grey. Okay. I'm gonna check his pockets. All right, and when you guys are uh, looking at him, when, when you're going through his pockets, you notice that it's not hard to see that he has a uh, uh, one of those uh, a tattoo on his neck, actually, of the eye with the ten spokes coming out of it in a purplish color on his neck. And then that spare the dying brings him to where he is back to consciousness. And when you were digging through there, babe, you find. He doesn't have too much of importance on him, but he does have some money. You want me to roll an investigation check? Yeah, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Let's see if you. Yeah, yeah. So when you're going through there, he doesn't have much on him. You just you did notice that mark though, and then he had uh, 19 gold pieces on him. So. Okay. Do you want me to add those, or do you want Adam? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, I can put them on that way. You can put them on the party inventory if you want. Yeah, actually. Akash is not Sarah. She doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, Sarah hasn't... Well, Sarah and specifically, but the rest of the party haven't given Artemy too much shit about getting her paid back. She still owes you guys a lot of money. Yeah, well, I found a bag of gems, so... And no one knows it yet. <laughs> yeah. Those, uh, I don't remember how much those are worth, but it was a good amount. I'm taking those as payment. <laughs> as payment for something, but she does, that's not her paying you back. You you found those fair and square. Yeah, but you see, normally I, you would split it, but I'm keeping it. All of it. <laughs> so it's payment. All right, so you grab that money out of his pockets as he is starting to kind of wake up a little bit, and he kind of just shakes around a little bit and sees you going through his pockets. He's like, oh, what, what the hell is going on here? And he's still on the ground, but he is awake now. 
Does spare the dying actually bring them back to consciousness, or they stay unconscious? They just, just stabilize. Stable. Them. Yeah. But, oh yeah, just stabilize. Them. Uh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, we we can you know assume that we brought him back to consciousness with a slap or something. But yeah, uh, say smelling salt or something under his nose yeah. that you just happen to have for some reason. Bef as before he's being awoken, though, I'll, I'll tell Jarlaxle that it uh, well it looks like you've got a spy somewhere in the Xanathar Guild because these guys knew immediately that we were going to be here and where this place was. He says, uh, I knew, he says, I figured it had to be Xanathar, fucking son of a bitch. He says, all right, I thought I got the spies out of my ranks because, you know, you guys had heard of that at least, you know, one guy that went over there. And, you know, there's more than one. Apparently there's even more than he thought. So he says, all right, I'm going to have to go through my ranks and see who else has been fucking around. But, yeah, this is obviously one of Xanathar's guys. And I'm guessing they were coming to try to get the staff and stop us from going after it. Well, they may have the staff. I mean, somebody got away with it unless Arnex caught them. He says, yeah. And he says, uh, by the way, the importance of that staff is uh, if that staff is in other hands, whoever controls it has the power to... There's a dragon ward, which nobody knows about, a magical dragon ward on the entire city. Uh, that's why Arnax was the only dragon in here. Whoever possesses that staff can choose to let a dragon in, but otherwise there's no dragons here. So um, if Xanathar does get a hold of that staff, he can take off the dragon ward from the city and uh, I'm sure probably find dragons with his reaches to cause problems. So as you can see, that staff doesn't want to... We don't want that staff to fall into the wrong hands, so... Well, good luck, RNX. You might want to get going. Go see if you can help him out. I mean, we can, we'll, exactly we'll be... We'll, 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 uh, you know, we'll be patient. You can you can just get us our gold, you know, later today or something. Let's have it <laughs> delivered to the bar. And on his way out, he says, yeah, he says, no problem, but uh, if the dragon gets too pissed, he might start wrecking the town, and you're... You know, tavern is in this town, so. And he's gone. And, and Sheena's kind of just. Good. Well, I was just going to. She, Sheena's kind of just standing there looking around, like, all right, what the hell do I do now? But she didn't leave yet, though, so. Well, I guess. I mean, we, we probably, by the tattoo, learned what we needed from this guy, so maybe we just, you know, don't bring him, don't bring him back to consciousness and let the poison kill him. I mean, he's stabilized with uh, Spare the Dying, but he's still poisoned, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm not sure that he'll give us a whole lot of information. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we can uh, persuade him through pain, but uh, I don't think he'll have too much. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he or the other bandit will have much information. The other bandit, you know, is already conscious and you've just seen everybody get wiped out so just tell him to find better employment and let him go uh, but this guy instead of you know bringing him back to consciousness could just let the poison kill him he could just fade away in his sleep yeah all right well then with that business taken care of here i suppose we might as well at least see if we can track down the you know if the dragon's out there flying around it shouldn't be too hard to find the uh the uh one that got away with the staff, but otherwise, you know, see if we can put our ear to the ground and maybe track him. What do you think? Yeah. Couldn't be too far from the dragon. Yeah, the, the problem is if he's not in dragon form, you know, if he's just, a, you know, in his dwarven form running around, then, then we got a couple of short people to, to find in a very big city. Would Ghost be able to follow his scent? I can always use my uh, spell to track the item since I came in contact with it. Oh shit, yeah. And it can't be that far yet, so you'd probably still be able to at least give us a you know a proper ping so we can track it down. Mm hmm That's actually a good idea. Because, yeah, it's, I mean, because that fight would have spent a, min, you know, a minute or so or whatever, because it wasn't even that many rounds, so... It yeah, they can't be too far seconds. away. The okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I still have some level 2 slots available. Um, it'll burn up one of them, though. Alright, let's go. Alright. Alright, you guys want to just uh, locate locate object now, and then uh, we'll run with it? or Yeah, we might as well. You know, see if we can we can find it. Or at least get uh, Jarlaxle and Arnax on the right path. I mean, he couldn't have gotten very far. It hasn't been that long. 
Yeah, it's only been like a minute or two. Well, since yeah, since the staff was picked up, it's probably only been like you know maybe ninety seconds, two minutes. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll cast, and then uh, we'll look for the staff using that. All right, guys. <clears throat> so you cast that, and uh, again, you you did get a good you know look at the staff a few times, uh, Taco, and it you get the lo the location of it. You get the feeling that it's again it's not too far away, and it is on the city streets right now, uh, running, and, and it gives you. A pretty good idea of where it's at so they are i can't remember what area the windmill was in but it's still in that same you know area of town so you actually get a, a good idea of where it's at like you could you know know north south east west which is whichever way it is so awkward maybe yeah while i'm getting the uh while i'm getting the tracking i'll let everybody know where it's going and where it's headed yeah, let's just dash. We'll just keep dashing till we catch up, till we find it. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Um, what you guys went through? Did you leave the door open, or did you close the vault door? I think we left it open, didn't we? No, when I mean we, now. Yeah, when we came down, we left it open, but uh, leave, on our way out, we'll you know tip it shut. Okay. After you know, yeah. letting the band, we'll let the bandit out, the the one that uh, you know was tied up, uh, let him out, and then we'll get out of here with Sheena, of course. You know, everybody out except for the bodies, uh, and then we'll tip the door shut. Okay. And did you? Are you guys still going to have Sheena take that? Uh, is she still going to escort that bandit to the no, uh, bar? Just letting, him, escape, just letting him go. Just told him to find okay. new, you know, find find new work. Uh, and then and yeah, then he let him go. Away like a little pussy. And then Sheena going with you guys, or? Or did you say anything to her when you guys were running out? Uh, she but might as well. Not just just tell her, you know, just tell her you, you might as well be, you know, of some help now. So just come with us. And she says, okay, I'm happy to help. Uh, just let me know where to go. I'll follow you guys. And then we'll chase after, you know, where, uh, where Eldora is leading with the pinging. All right. Good and old locate so object. Yeah. So as you're going, you just get the idea, okay, I need to turn here, or I need to go this way, or whatever, Sako. So you guys are running, and you're in the front with your cow hose, you know, smashing on the cobblestones, making a bunch of noise, charging through with your horns down, like, you know, going after a matador or something like that. And uh, you are, you guys are running through the city streets, and you guys get the feeling that you're starting to get close to it. So, let me drop you guys on here. Are these the same roofs that we fought on before? <laughs> it's actually a slightly different map, but it's made by the same people, obviously. But you've done, like, I think a couple different maps that look very similar to this. So. I don't know, that's right. The other one had a courtyard in it, didn't it? Yeah, and then there was that bigger one when you guys were doing the rooftop chase. And there was that giant turtle when you guys were with the stone. But again, I think it must all be the same artist because it was similar stuff, you know. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the map this time. If it it may show up, but it's probably because uh, you know I've got two Fantasy Grounds clients running on the same machine, so it's running. Fantasy Grounds is using too much memory. Okay. This map isn't super important. We can guide you through it. So and it's it's not very big at all either. It's definitely not like as big as the vault map was and stuff. So okay. If somebody um, can throw like hard. a Sako, if you, or if one of you don't mind dropping, uh, you know, grab a screenshot of it and drop it in the uh, Discord. It would be helpful too, so I have an idea of what it looks like. All right, I'll get it going. Thank you. All right, and there you guys are. So you were, you guys are coming down a street, and you know, buildings on both sides of you, you guys there, uh, and you guys see a guy in front of you, and he is actually holding the staff you see in your hand uh, and then he you see a guy standing in front of you there Sako and um, yeah and then a second later you hear very like wind moving and you know parting a lot and the sound of uh, something heavy that you see a second later which is Arnax in dragon form landing on this roof here 
Oh, let me make him back to his regular size. He's not teeny. <laughs> yeah, so hit the, the one that looks like a diamond again and change that back to... There you go. Whatever, whatever size it was. Uh, okay. And then just hold down control and then mouse wheel to make him big again. Thanks, Taco. Okay, so we're actually in the alley then. He's down. You guys were coming down the street, uh, in, yeah, in this alleyway here, and there's a little a little sidewalk on each side, a couple of buildings, and you see a guy uh, actually in better looking armor and, you know, a better looking weapon and stuff than the guys that you've been seeing previously, uh, standing in front of you with the staff in his hand, and then you see Arnax land on the roof just uh, in front of him, uh, so above him on the roof over there. Okay. Uh, remove, uh, you can do this in one click as well, or, or a couple clicks without having to do them individually, but remove the the unconscious, or the people that aren't here. Uh, if you oh, click yeah. on the menu button, and then uh, delete from tracker, I, I think it shows a skull icon, and then delete all hostile from tracker, or whatever it is. Uh, you'll need to re-add to Bandit Lord, but it'll get rid of everybody for you. Okay, I'll get them out of here. There's a, a few options, just pick whichever one is best suitable. You'll probably need to re-add. Uh, if you actually, since RNX and Jarlax will, well, yeah, you can just do it. Yeah, it's fine. Just do them one by one. Doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. And oh yeah, Sheena's with you guys too. Let me drop her in there. Jarlaxle is not. And Bandit 18 is gone as well. Ah, yes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, and Sheena is with you guys. Uh, and you guys actually don't see Jarlaxle currently. But you guys do see that guy in front of you standing with the staff in his hand. And he looks over at you guys and say, you guys looking for this? Well, he said that, and then he saw Arnax land on the roof, and he looks up and says, Ah, oh, shit. Then he still looks back over at you guys. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just point at the dragon. I'll say, yeah, I think that I think he is. Can I, uh, can I take a puff of my uh, vape pen for intimidation? And uh, pretty much just mention that he is outnumbered six to one, and also one of us is a dragon. <laughs> I think you should probably just leave the staff and uh, walk away from the staff. Okay, uh, advantage intimidation, please, sir. Keldor's blowing the smoke out of his, like, cow snout, dragon-like. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Natural 20. Yep. He, he's, he's, uh, he's like, eh, eh, maybe that's not a bad idea. Maybe I will. And then he actually goes to set the staff down. And then, um, actually, as he does, he goes to set the staff down. And I see he has some other friends with him who start advancing. But the guy did set the staff down, but the other guys start moving. Or you see them, and they actually, well, you guys can't really see him yet, but a couple of them start moving that way. And so he goes to set the staff down, and then he's like, okay, yeah, maybe this isn't really a good idea. And then, uh, either way, though, right when he does that, um, the RNX fucking burns them all anyway. So, let's see. Did that... When you target guys with an NPCG, is it the same? You can do multiple targets, like hold down control, and you can do multiple targets, like if you were a player. Uh, yeah, but it, you because I'm the one that selected in the combat tracker, you just made me target all of them. Oh, okay. And they're not revealed on the. Oh shit! Never mind. Duff. I'm looking. I was looking at the one in Discord. Like I don't see them on the map yet, but never mind. Oh yeah. But yeah, you just had me target all of them. So if you. Uh, I'll untarget them myself, um, but bring, drag the arrow down to RNX and then target them from with him. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, and yeah. I'll send you an update now. Oh, it's no big deal. I, I can see the tokens, so I can see like the general area where they would be. Since you basically, since the one that you sent has the um, had the the other ones on it, so I could tell that like that RNX is supposed to be on the roof and so on. Thanks, Argo. All right, so I'll have to roll that one separately. He does actually hit them all, but I have to roll that one separately. So you see Arnax open his mouth and kind of stand up, you know, extra kind of tall, and starts frying all those bastards. Oh shit! <laughs> Did that? I don't know. You only rolled it. Yeah, the others aren't targeted, or at least, well, you know what? Actually, we can't see if they are. Never mind. Okay. Then actually, yeah, I'll just go on this way. <laughs> That's funny. I did this one to have. Back to six to one. Yeah, he uh, just left, or well, it'd be more like right to left, I guess, where he is. But either way, just this huge arc of fire that goes down and fries the living hell out of all of them. But yeah. okay, that's what it was. Yeah, and so it goes to fry all of them, and then you notice that the fire did go over the bandit lord too. Well, the, you know the, the the main guy in front of you. Uh, Obviously, it says on the combat tracker, but when it goes to hit him, uh, he seems to have like a almost like a little magical bubble right over him, and the fire didn't even seem to really phase him. So, and... okay, now, and um, yeah, might as well. Do you guys want to roll initiative? Because we'll just go in actual combat order now. So, yeah, you reset, guys reset the combat championship. tracker again, though. So, okay. so uh, change the round to uh, to Zero. one. Well, it what? would it would be yeah. You need to change to one because you already have it on me for the combat. There you go. So the bandit lord decided to stay after all. <laughs> yeah, because so the he staff went... down, and then these bandits showed up, and then the dragon killed all of his friends, and then now what? Did he pick the staff back up? He, when he was going to, he set the staff down, he like kneeled down to set the staff down, still had his hand on of it, or on it, excuse me, and then all of his, you know, little dumb cronies came out from, started to come out from behind the wall over there, but then Arnax fried them all, but it didn't seem to phase the bandit lord, so. There we go. All right, guys. Damn, another Again. initiative for Eldor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, slow now. as a cow. <laughs> All right, so I moved it back up, and then rounds one. So is that ready to go, G? Akasha's turn? Yep. Okay. Hey. All right, so everybody gets fried, and you guys had a nice little show there. And now, babe, you see that the Bandit Lord didn't seem to get phased by the fire. So. And he picked the staff back up, and he's standing back up. Alright, so it does have the staff. Okay. So, let's see if we hit first. If that does hit. When I was rolling those, the damages for our axe on those things, he got two natural 20s, so a couple of guys got, like, extra crispy. So, he got two fucking natural 20s in those rolls. Alright. So, we're gonna favorite enemy. He's human, right? He's a human, yes. Okay, good. So, favorite enemy. And then I'm going to, how many charges does that take? All three. Okay, so we're gonna use my bow. We are going to paralyze him. So oh, yeah. he can't do anything until the beginning of my next turn. 
Oh, okay. Two? It's it for damage. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Okay, that's it. But still, there was no roll or anything for that paralyzed, so it, it, it just works automatically, right? Because I yeah, didn't it just see anything says, roll, so. It just says they expend three charges to paralyze the target until the start of the wielder's next turn. Okay. So, so you go uh, and hit if, him. If the attack hits, as long as it hits, then yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, they still have so, to hit, but yeah. The, the arrow hits him in the arm. It, I mean, it, it just... It actually just went through like the side of his arm. Nice little cut. It didn't even stick into him. Uh, but you notice that he is all of a sudden like, frozen in place. So he doesn't seem to be able to move. I mean, his eyes are still moving, but his body doesn't seem to be able to move. All right, G. Okay, I'm going to. Um, how? I mean, he's that hurt him a little bit, of course. But that does. Uh, I probably wouldn't be able to gauge this just yet. Never mind. All right. Well, if you're looking at him, he, he definitely looks like he's just... Just from looking at him, you can tell he's sturdier than those morons that just got fried. So. That's about what I was gauging, is how healthy is he, but I think that's 30. I can't I can't see squares, but I think that's 30 from where it was. Um, I'm going to uh, light another... Uh, a smaller bomb as I'm, as I'm uh, uh, running along this and just launch it at him when I get close enough. Uh, it is a much smaller one, but uh, uh, plus six, let's see. And oh, because he's paralyzed. Okay, I was. Gonna, I was oh, yeah. That's why he had Kevin. advantage, but because he's paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and he is injured already because of that. Yeah, shot. he got hit by an arrow. Nice. So it's a small two ones, damn it. Uh, just a, a small like a uh, like cherry sized bomb, basically a little little popper. Okay. Yeah, you go and throw it, and it blows up next to him and burns a nice little side of his leg pretty good nice little singe on there damages the pants and uh it doesn't it's not still burning luckily for him since he was you know paralyzed but it did burn his leg pretty good there on the side nice little cherry bomb attack okay any bonuses uh i just i'm gonna mark him as my bonus action so that if he comes in range of me i get to use a reaction to jab him okay and that's it <sighs> oh yeah all those church are toast all right, and it's Arnax's turn. And my poison is still on because it's been less than 10 minutes, right? I mean, we just ran straight out in the street, so it hasn't been 10 minutes since I switched it, right? I don't, I mean, maybe just a, you know, a minute or two of chasing them, because again, you guys were not too far behind, so it hasn't been 10 minutes yet. Okay. So, I mean, it's been, what, two or three or something, maybe? So, because you guys were dashing too, so no, not much. Oopie. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a good one. So he actually Arnax hops down, psh, makes a big old crashing noise as he jumps down there, because he just jumps from the roof to the so, like pretty much smashes him right into the concrete, make him hamburger meat out of him. And he's standing on top of all those bodies and you see him like he start to swing his body around, like he's gonna try to whip his tail, but then he sees that he's, you know, too close to quarters, so he actually goes to break his claw, that dude over here. Oh, and again, because apparently this guy is the king of crits, rolled another 20. Okay, that one doesn't make any sense. The crit table says that your target starts shooting lightning bolts out from them and hits any uh, other enemies close to them, but... There are no other enemies close to them, and that doesn't make sense. Remind me, I'll, I'll put it on the things to go over with you, but I'll, I'll have you switch over the table from th that one. Has a bunch of just stupid bullshit in it, uh, so I'll, I'll show you how to take that one off and put the regular one back on. Okay. So he swings his claw out, actually gets a really good rake on him, and cuts up the bandit lord pretty good there. Actually, he is not even here yet. Well, actually, you know what? Speaking of that, you do see your guys' 
old buddy Jarlaxle coming from here and he's like, ah, oh, good. Thought I saw a big giant dragon over there. But him moving over there would have been his turn. Sheena. So Jarlaxle did find you guys. She's like, sees what's going on over there. So she moves in. I... Yeah, because he's not really in the way, so she's going to... Yeah, she's been having good luck with that, so she's going to... She, You see her as she's running, pull her gun out. And as she's running, she goes to shoot and just must, obviously, uh, not paying very close attention, the bullet misses and actually hits one of the bodies, at the body just to the north of where the... Bandit Lure is over there. Ghosty's turn. Right. Well, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, it's way too far. So, he can't quite get there, so he's just gonna go... Let's see. He's gonna bark and spit bees at him? That's right. <laughs> That's, fine. That's his ranged attack. 45. Uh, you know, he's just gonna stay right back here. Okay. Sneak it up on Rob. <laughs> Alright. And <sighs> so even if he gets hit, he's still paralyzed until the beginning or until your turn again, Viv? Yeah, until the beginning of my turn. And I'm not okay. exactly sure what paralyzed means. I don't I'm guessing know if he can attack. Uh, Bring up the effects G. Uh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you the conditions thing, but uh, you can see it. Just put the. Well, you have the. Never mind. You have the paralyzed on him. So that's that will take care of the rolls automatically. But uh, his speed is zero. He is uh, considered restrained. All that stuff. Let me find it for you. Yeah. Because I see the paralyzed on here. I just don't see an info button though. Uh, incapacitated. Uh, can't move or speak. Uh, automatically fails strength and dex saves. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet. So the wow. the dragon uh, hitting him would have been a oh, no crit. Oh, crit. Yeah, no wonder. All right, so he does nothing. Sago. All right. I'm going to uh, run right behind Rav right here. Uh, put my hand on his shoulder and just say resist, and I'm going to cast resistance on him. Awesome. Okay. What does that? What does that? What does it give me resistance to? You, uh, you actually, uh, for your next save, if you choose to, you can roll one d4 and add that to your save roll. So uh, it helps you save. Nice. Thanks, dude. Oh, we, we fixed your spells last week, too, by the way. I'm sure you noticed it last week. But... Yeah. I don't know if this is working here. I'm clicking on them and the effect here. Uh, oh, there you go. Looks yeah. like they all happened at the same time. Yep. There was three resistances to Rav, so... Nice. Cool. And then on the extra movement, I'm just going to move back over to this corner. Okay. Awesome. So Rob seems sturdier and healthier. And... Oh, he's dead. And... You can just remove the ones that are unconscious, G. We know that there's oh, a yeah. pile of bodies under him. Yeah, true. And um, it's your turn, babe. And then as soon as you uh, go to, you know, start to move again, babe, you look over and see that the bandit uh, is starting to move his hands a little bit. Now he's starting to be able to, looks like, move again. Yeah. All right. So. He wants Hunter's Mark. Alright, so that one is mine. That one goes on that guy. Alright. Let's pass that, and let's try to hit this guy. No. Nope. No. <laughs> Missed. Alright, so that's my action bonus. But assuming he's probably gonna run. I'm at least gonna go there. Okay. Uh, Rob. 
Okay, and he's no longer paralyzed, right? Yeah. Lame. Because if I could if I could have gotten an auto crit, it could have been pretty beautiful. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, there's in the middle of the street. Like there's nothing between me and him now, right? Uh, no. Okay, I think that's 25 for me to get there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm going to go the full 30. Uh, I don't really want to be directly in front of the dragon in case I get hit too, but I'm going to go ahead and do it for the flanking bonus. Uh, so I'm... Uh, uh, yeah, my map's acting up a little bit, so I can't I can't really see, but I mean, I can see where the tokens are. So I'm not like in a wall or anything there, am I? I'll send you another one. You're standing on a sidewalk just to the south of the bandit lord in between the house. There's okay. just one fire between there. Okay. You're standing on the sidewalk. All right, then I'm going to run over here, and I'll go ahead and give him... Uh, I'm going to try to bleed him. So if, if this okay. hits, uh, then I'll have to make a con save if it hits, but let me try that first. Uh, with uh, plus two for the flanking? Yeah, full-on flanking is plus two. If it's directly, you know... That's that's how I cross. do it, so it's, yeah, it's up to you if you're using the same one, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. right. A 16. And it hits. All right. Then my... Whoa. Shit, I'm going to get a bunch on this. Thanks, Taco. Uh, favorite enemy and poison and slayer and bleeding. Oh, actually, he's got to make a save, so hang on. Succeeded or failed? Uh, succeeded. Okay. Then it'll just be the damage, but he won't have the dot effect. Boom. That's a really good one. Yeah, it was the so, yeah. poison, the favorite enemy, slayer, and then the bleed damage, and then the regular of dice. So. Yeah. Nice. Right, but he's not strong. bleeding, so yeah. I mean, the the ongoing effect won't won't continue to bleed him, which sucks. But and I'll spin it around, try to hit him with the butt end of the spear. Okay. That was my last uh, special effect too. That hits. It hits. Yeah, it hits. All right. There you go. And I will stay right there. All right. And the Bandit Lord is looking like he's not uh, going to survive too much more. And Arnax knows that, so. He is going to... Actually, no, because if he... Yeah. So he's just going to go claw him again. I'll, I'll, like, duck down a little bit so I don't... You know, so I'm not directly getting hit. Okay. Yeah. So, because if he rolled bad, you probably would be... Because he's a, so big, you might be within the rake range, so... And... Fucking modifier, Jesus Christ. That's ridiculous. He has a plus 14 to his attack, so... And he hits, and as he is going to swing, uh, you hear, that as the, the dragon's going to swing his claw, um, well, the bandit lord is facing him. Actually, no, he's still be here. Yeah, but he's, okay, he's facing him here, because he knows the dragon's getting ready to whack him. And as he's going to swing his claw, the bandit lord says, you will never defeat Balsakius, son of Testicles. And then that's the last thing he ever says. <laughs> And, well, I'm assuming. Yep. And that claw essentially, like, cuts him into multiple pieces, almost like if you, you know, were cutting up a steak or something. And he is now ghost, laying on the ground. And Arnax picks up the dragon staff. No, oh, I picked it up first. I, I, I grabbed you? it. Just, yeah, I was grabbing it. And then I'm going to say, you, you belong to me now. Well, if you want it, you can roll for it and see who's working. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was gonna say you might not want to because he might get pissed at you, but you could if you wanted to. I'm gonna, I'm so. gonna get him a collar, and we're gonna go on walks. He's gonna learn to fetch and roll over and play dead. Why bother walking to stab him fly you everywhere? I don't think he's gonna fit in the bar. <laughs> he's got a dwarf That's form. True. If he's got a dwarf form, then he probably has a mini dragon form. That'd be fun. I'm he's just gonna, gonna point down at the corpse and say, "Always listen to a vaping cow." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, well, I guess if you turn him into a mini dragon, you can make him like mini mini, and he could be uh, Sniffles' little pet, and nobody would know that he's actually like a big giant dragon. So if anybody tries to break in, he could kill them all. We'll have to so, like make him dumb somehow so that he doesn't respond, so that he so he can't talk anymore and stuff. <laughs> then he could be a pet. Yeah. Lobotomize him. All right. Well, you you've got your staff back then. Uh, Jarlaxle here. This is a uh, you know the the benefactor we were speaking about uh, that uh, was intending to try to return some order to the city. So he's who the money was going to. He obviously was trying to help get your staff back as well. So that should probably bode well for your uh, um, understanding of his intent. And uh, Arnax says, "I uh, thank you all for your help very much." As uh, I'm. I'm not sure. He says that obviously if the staff fell into the wrong hands, it could have some negative repercussions. You saw how uh, the, my fire didn't even affect him as he was holding the staff, so it obviously has uh, quite the power, so thank you. And then he looks over and says, says uh, Hello, my name is Aranax. Uh, you're Jarlaxle? Jarlaxle says, Yeah, um, nice to meet you. Uh, t- did these uh, fine folks uh, convince you to give your money back to the city? Because I can help it go in the right place, get Never Ember back in power. And then they start talking about it. So. Then you hear them talking, and then um, uh, when they're done, uh, Jarl Axel says um, that he'll have his men go in and, you know, get the gold coins and all that stuff. So. Which again, there was like 10,000 pounds worth of gold, so it's going to take a minute, but. Sounds and good. then. Uh, and Jarlaxle says, oh yeah, he turns around to you guys, uh, he says, you know, excuse me, a second to Arnax, and, and turns around to you guys, and well, into you two, and looks at you, G, uh, as he's turning and says, uh, I will definitely have your guys' money to you very soon, uh, I'll, you know, have Sheena keep in contact with you guys, because I pay my debts, so. I'm more interested in information than the money, but, uh, you know, we, we can talk about that later, uh, once you've dealt with whatever business you need with Arnax here. Uh, where where can we find you later? He says... Uh, the theater uh, or the ship? He says, uh, uh, I'll actually be at, at the theater again, but if you need anything, um, you know, you can just let Sheena know, and she can let me know. I'll come by and see you guys at the bar soon. If you need me, uh, right away I'll be at the theater, but if not, I'll, I'll be in contact in the next couple of days. I'll come by, we'll have a drink, you know, maybe something to eat, and we'll discuss everything, and I'll, you know, tell you what we're going to do to try to get the city back in order. Thanks to your help. Sounds good. All right, guys. Um, that means that yeah, there'll be uh, a few social things on the next one uh, to wrap this up, and then we will start. If you guys want to do Mad Mage, we'll start that because obviously these two stories go together too. Should we go ahead oh, and, and play then... the? Should we go ahead and play the the Final Fantasy level up sound right now? <laughs> Definitely. Because you guys are again. That's what I was going to. The last thing I was going to say is you guys are going up to level five. So think about what it is that you guys want to do, and we'll take care of that at the beginning of the next session. Because you guys have finished chapter four, and again, except for oh no, you guys can still do the side missions too. I forgot about that. But we'll level you up to five though. And then if you guys want to do the side missions, you still can. And then uh, if not, there's there'll be some social stuff on the next one. But that is the end of uh, at least all the major stuff, except for the wrapping up the loose ends of Dragonized. So. I said let's do the side missions next week. Kind of shore that up. Yeah, let's do let's cool. do the level up. I mean, if you guys if you guys you know, assuming we're ready to, we'll do the level up, um, and then you know we can do the side mission stuff, and then we can start you know whatever the end of whatever the other uh, uh, you know stuff that, that, that tying up loose ends with Jarlaxle and so on, uh, and side missions, and then we can start Mad Mage the week after. Yeah. And that even, you know, if next week ends up being a little bit shorter or something, I don't know how long the remaining side missions are going to take. So if it ends up being shorter, whatever, no big deal. So, sound good? 